Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When fat cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re up Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm baby man Just caught a touchdown From the bay in and out of jail, my people say I'm finished. They said I'm bad news, like my weight cut in jail. In and out of jail, my people say I'm finished. They said I'm bad news, like my weight cut in jail. They said I'm bad news, like my weight cut in jail. I knew God had a way for me that mm. day. So I'm faking, I want to be like Hot Boy, my cousin. Mm -hmm. He the man back there in the project where I, where I live at. I'm shooting dice, I got like 1,500 on me. You know, mm. I'm nickel and diamond. He the man, he got about 20, 30 G's on him. Mm. Mm. I'm in high school. This is my senior year. So all the shooters are high schoolers. Wow. Your goal is to literally be 19 at that time for me. That's what me and my brother go. My brother died at 19. My homeboys that go to school with me, eight of them jumped out of Cutlass and said, P, you know what it is. And hot boy, he the man. He said, man, whatever. I threw my money up in the air. I couldn't run. Like they was trying to rob you, saying? They, they come with it. What? Right. They come with <laughs> it. It's right. four on each side. We're in the project shooting right. dice. You only right. can run up the steps. Right. If you run that way, they're going to shoot you in the back or whatever because right. you run, try to run through the cold Wow. I wanted to live. I run up the steps where it's dark. So I'm telling somebody, throw me my gun. Throw me my gun. I start grabbing the dough rattle on the dough and I lay it down. They shoot up the dough. Bop, 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 bop. Man, shit. Wow. I come downstairs, they hit Hot Boy eight times. He's still living. I hit a car drive off. I run downstairs, jump in the car, take him to the hospital. And I, I knew like God had something else for me, but I thought, I, I thought that was it. I had right. to do what I had to do. Right. I never seen him. They went to school with me, never seen him. Wow. Hot boy told me, man, go on to college. You're going to be something. You're going to be a star. First day I got to college, he caught all eight of them, and he went to prison. Yes. Wow. So after that, I knew that God had a way for me, that I needed to change my life. This guy that I was engaged to be married to, people called me and was telling me that he was in Houston and he had some kind of fight with Kim C. And when... uh. I didn't believe it because it was supposedly it had happened in Houston and Jimmy was home in New Orleans. So I kept saying, well, that's impossible. But when it all came down to the come down, it had actually happened. Jimmy had caught a flight like 5 o'clock in the morning and he was back in New Orleans by 11 a.m. And so... I never knew that he even left the city. So when 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 Pimp C called me, I was very nervous because I had considered him a friend and uh I didn't know, you know, how he felt about that whole situation that had took place with him and Jimmy. Mm -hmm. So when he called my phone so would that I, have been the, know, talk, was that the night when I guess they, they ran up in his hotel room and in a it was in a hotel room. It, yes, yes. That was that incident. How did they that know was, that was that he, How did they know that he was there? Or how did they even did they kick the door? See, that, this is the thing. I was in a total blind of the whole thing. So by the time I spoke with Tim C, that was the first thing I wanted to say because I felt like I didn't want him me and him to run into each other in the street and it'd be some chaos because I heard it was like a big old incident that happened. So when he when he called me This is, I this said, is after he gets out of prison he calls me. This is after he gets out because mm -hmm. you know during that whole time I hadn't spoke with him and I was like, Chad, I don't even know what to say. Um I didn't know that that happened to you. I said, um that guy was home so early I went to bed like it couldn't have never happened and he told me he said Mia don't worry about that I already talked to and I know you had nothing 
to do with that. I was like, me and this guy, we ended up going out in a in a blaze of gunfire, and you know he's he's dead. I was I was telling, see, I was like, you know, he died, and he was like, yeah, I know, but don't worry about that because I know that you had absolutely nothing to do with it. Julia, I was so blindsided by that incident, and it hurt me so bad because I had really become friends with Chad and Bun over the years, you know, and but I used to laugh, like I said, when they, they shot uh, the Players from the South video, we was literally sitting at the car table, Chad and Bun and Bison, we was playing punk. Because we were bored and the, and the director decided to shoot that in the video. And they were smoking cigars while we were playing. And girl, I don't smoke. And I'm trying to stop from coughing. And they snapped me because the smoke was so damn. And then I had this curly, wet and wavy weave that started to dry up and look like a Jerry curl. <laughs> and, you know, they was just making so many jokes on me and bragging on me. And, you know, I was trying to just remember all of that stuff about us. So when that incident happened, and everybody started calling me because I was doing a time. No limit was the high. Mm -hmm. Guys, different magazines, you know, different. So there was just, there was just rumors about it and people were calling you? Yeah, they was like, we heard your husband um, bust in a hotel and, you know, was fighting can't see and I was like no um that's not the truth and they was like well I think it is the truth Mia you probably need to figure that out you know and so I called who, who was the saying that to you that, that, was, that was uh magazine that called you? just different 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 writers um girls who was doing publicity at the time mm -hmm. um you know, just calling me all of, just like, the phone, just every time one person hang up, somebody else would call, and they were saying it. So I asked him, uh, well, did that happen? Did you do that? And he was like, no, I was here. I, what you talking about? And so I was like, that's what I keep telling people. You know, like, they, <laughs> that really, like, went under my nose, and it really, really hurt my feelings when I found out that that actually did happen, you know. So how did you ultimately find out? I didn't out? know. Well, one of the guys from No Limit, um, he said it. And as I said, is that the truth? And he was like, yeah, that's the truth. He was like, um, Jimmy did that early in the morning. And so I was like, wow, that's really, that's really messed up, you know. So when I... When I confronted Jimmy about it, you know, he was like, well, we, we got into it, and we've been getting into it over a period, over different situations. He was like, you know, when C be on the road, he get on the mic, and he's just always saying, you know, fuck Master P and fuck us. And, um, yo, yo, we back. Shades pop lot. Mob gang. We on our way to Louisiana with it. New Orleans, if you want to be exact. The Calliope, if you're using GPS. Strangers, beware. Now, in an effort to tell every gangster's story, also keeping on with what's going on in the streets, and pretty much bringing y'all stories that I think y'all should know about, a lot of times this gangster shit crosses right over to the music industry. And if you're hearing the music and not just listening to it, you would hear rappers talk about it like outcasts saying, seeing this rap shit is really just like selling smoke or the more infamous Nas line. Somehow the rap game reminds me of the crack game. So it's really like they're parallel to each other. And with that being said, it got me thinking, putting some of these episodes together about some of the record labels that came up and some of the movements and if you think about a lot of them, there is almost always a notorious street figure closely associated with it. So I'm going to break down a few examples for you. So you have Death Row. Then you have Hario. Not to mention guys like Big Jake. Then shit, the whole Bloods. 
Then you have record labels like Bad Boy. You have guys like Wolf and the rarely mentioned Riz. You have labels like Murder Inc. You have guys like Supreme McGriff. Even rap a lot. Shit, they got J Prince. And then when you get down to the South, even, you're going to have Cash Money Records, which is closely associated with Gangsta Williams, Rockefeller, associated with OG Wan. And the person that we're covering today is going to be closely associated with No Limit Records, as well as Randall Calliope Slim Watts. So I really say that to say it's not that the labels are built on the backs of these street guys, but it's not a coincidence that they are always around. Now, a lot of these guys are kind of like mysteries because they're not the CEO. They're not on the forefront of the company. But like I said, in the effort to try to put a face to the names that we know, today we are going to be covering none other than Jimmy, hot boy Jimmy Keller. Now, you're probably not familiar with the name if you're not from New Orleans or not a fan of the No Limit Empire. A lot of people know him as Master P, Silk, and C Murder's cousin. But he was one of those street dudes right there on the forefront at the height of the No Limit Empire. A lot of people outside of New Orleans are not familiar with No Limit would find out more about Hot Boy Jimmy in an interview that his ex-girlfriend, No Limit star Mia X, would go on to do with Julia Beverly. And I'm sure it was almost in reference to the book that she did about Pimp C. But they did take time to talk about an incident that occurred in a hotel room that allegedly involved Pimp C, Master P, as well as Hot Boy Jimmy. Now, I'm not sure who else was there, but in this alleged incident, they're going to say that Pimp C would go on to be pistol whipped over an alleged dispute that he had at the time with Master P and No Limit. Now, prior to that, C and Master P had done some work together. And a lot of people believe it's over that. But Master P being the G he is, he never really spoke on it. But he did speak in interviews about his relationship with Hot Boy Jimmy. And in one of those interviews, he talked about a situation where it was an apparent robbery attempt and hot boy jimmy would end up being shot by some people that went to school with master p and according to master p it was about eight people now i tried to do as much research as i can involving that incident and i could not find any verifiable information but i did see where jimmy spoke to fortune magazine about master p essentially saving his life now, that's going to be back in 99 when No Limit was at the height of their success and Master P was shooting a movie called Lockdown that was apparently about an Olympic hopeful that was wrongfully convicted. And on the set of that movie, Hot Boy Jimmy, who Fortune listed at the time as No Limit's logistic coordinator for concerts, would have a role in that movie, ironically, as one of the prison inmates. Now, in that article that they did with Fortune magazine, it was done at the empty Santa Fe State Penitentiary. And when speaking to Jimmy and talking to him about his role in the movie, they would pretty much say for him, it wasn't at all acting. Telling the magazine about one day that he received a call from Master P after being released from prison after serving seven and a half years on a manslaughter charge, saying that Master P had left him a few messages, but he was too embarrassed to return his call. Finally saying that Master P eventually caught up with him and he didn't say anything about where he'd been or what he had did, going on to say that he did say that they had work to do and saying that that essentially saved his life. But unfortunately, like a lot of street dudes that came before him, it didn't. Though she didn't go into details about his death, Mia X would confirm it. And just like the life of Hot Boy Jimmy is a mystery, so is his death. I've seen some places online that said it was right around 2005. I've seen more places saying that it was 2006, but they didn't really go into any specific details. So if we got anybody tuned in that's tied to the situation, if you want to know, 
Y'all get in the comment box and set the record straight. Y'all know I'm going to be back with some more real trill spill shit. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all make sure y'all hit that red subscribe button right under this video so y'all know how we coming. And like I said, y'all flood the comment box. Y'all let me know who was the most notorious henchman to back a record label. Y'all let me know where we need to go, what cities we haven't hit, what stories we miss, what schemes going around. It's your boy Popalot. Mob gang.